This is Kim Meyer, host of Choose to Rise. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Liz Colburn, host of the Morning Uplift here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come back and check out my show, The Morning Uplift, where we talk about finding your beauty in the journey. A new show comes out twice a month on the first and third Mondays. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of The Morning Uplift. Thank you again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. What is up, everyone? It's Julianne Condia, your host of Rewritten. I love Rewrite Your Story Day. I look forward to it because I love hearing your feedback. I love hearing how the episode you listened to, how it spoke to you. It's so fascinating to me. So many of you have such different takeaways and I just admire and appreciate you. It's incredible. Today I want to talk to you about something that I've been doing for, I feel like, the last four years. And it never occurred to me that this is a big way to rewrite your story. I was actually having a conversation with my friend Kylie, and she was talking about her dreams. We live in Silicon Valley, and let me tell you, it is so cool to live here. It's extremely innovative. So many people are starting businesses Google is here, Tesla is here, Facebook is here, YouTube, everything, everything. It's brilliant people. And when you live here and you surround yourself with people who are starting businesses, people who are going for it, it really gets your mind and wheels spinning of what's possible of what can I do? I want to create. It puts you in that state. And Kylie was just talking to me about her dreams and what she sees for her life. And, you know, it's there's a lot of uncertainty with the stage of, that she's at in life and changes that are coming and what makes sense and, and what doesn't make sense. And so much of our dreams create uncertainty, the unknown, Sometimes we just have to go for it and figure it out. I really do believe that. I believe it all starts with just taking action. So as we were talking about this, there was some conflict. How how can I maintain being a wife and being a daughter and, you know, being a new mom and, you know, and all these things? Like, how can I keep up with this and chase my dreams all at the same time? And I said to her, I said, Kylie... It's vital that you figure out what your top six roles are in life. Because if you are pouring all of your energy and time into a role that isn't in your top, you are going to feel so spread thin in the areas of life you really crave to thrive. And She looked at me and she said, well, what do you mean? I said, let me tell you. My six roles in life, these are my top. I'm a Christian. I'm a wife. I'm a dog mom. I'm a mentor and leader. I'm a coach and I'm a friend. That could go with daughter too, but I'm a friend. And I remember, you know, I love to volunteer. You guys, I do. I love it. And I feel like I put so much content out on social media that that's my way of giving back in a way. I love it. I love volunteering. I love, you know, spending time in the community, but that's not in my top six roles. Things shift. Your top six roles will change with time. I'm not a mom yet. So let me tell you when one day when I am a mom, a a role is going to have to switch. And so I was asked actually 
a couple months ago to present to a group of people here in Silicon Valley. And I remember being asked and I was really flattered, but then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I just, you know, it's not fitting in, in my roles. It's, it's going to take time away from other roles because, you know, being a business owner and, um, being a mentor and a leader that takes up so much of my time and I love it, but I don't want being a wife and being a Christian and being a dog mom and a friend to be compromised. So I reached out to the person who asked me and I said, without an excuse or anything, I think sometimes when we say no, we think it's better to give an excuse or lie. But for me, I just said, hey, I appreciate you asking. I am not going to, I'm not going to say yes to this. And I remember her answer back to me. She said, wow, thanks for your transparency and honesty. Have a great day. I was like, yes. Sometimes we say yes to everything because we feel so bad about saying no. And at the end of the day, if someone's about to be mad at you for saying no and putting up a boundary in your life, that will help you reevaluate how that person fits into your life. If someone's pressuring you to do something and you're just saying yes because you feel bad, I would take a step back and really think about that. The really good quality people in your life are going to to support you. I recently made a post about how I stopped drinking alcohol completely. And it's been really cool because I've gone to so many wineries and breweries, weddings, trips, and no one, because I, I hang out and spend time with the people I love the most. And I mean, family, everyone, no one pressured me. When they were all having a drink, they, they weren't like, come on, you know, just do it. Just have one. None of that. They're so respectful. And it's kind of cool to think about that and just think, man, I really do surround myself with kick-ass people who respect me and don't make me feel bad for living a certain type of way. So I really invite you to think about your top six roles in life. And with those six roles, it's really important to figure out what you want those roles to look like. So for example, for being a Christian, a role for me for that is church every Sunday and a devotion every morning and a life group. That's essentially a Bible study. That's what I want that role as a Christian to look like. For now, things might change. As a wife... Being intentional with Eric. And that can be a variety of different things. Leaving a sweet note, sending a sweet text, hugging him more. He is all about physical touch. So grabbing his hand, hugging him, cuddling with him, right? So being intentional with that. A date night once a week. And then maybe serving him more. When he's sitting, asking if he needs anything. When he's working on something, hey, can I help you with anything? And being better with that. So with each role, I write down three things that I would like that role to look like. And then my friend and mentor, Trina, said with your roles, she taught me this whole role thing. It's life-changing. She said, what is the adjective you want with each role? I was like, ooh, that's good. For me, for friend, an intentional friend I feel like I am such a quality time person. I spend so much of my time online connecting with people that I feel the deepest connection when everyone's at my place and we're on the couch hanging out and laughing and eating probably. So I feel closest to my friends when I'm with them in person. So sometimes it's I find myself not being as intentional with, friends that aren't near me. So with my best friend, Hannah, I FaceTime her all the time of like, I have to be intentional with that friendship because she lives all the way in Milwaukee. So how do you want to feel with these roles? What, what word would describe, like for me, I want to be a present wife. I want to be an active dog mom. I want to be an effective mentor and leader. I want to be a reliable coach. Those are my words to describe each role. And with that, when other things come your way, you don't have to say 
no to everything that comes your way, but it will allow you to not burn out. It will allow you to create some boundaries and spend more time in the roles that you want to spend more time with. And it's really helped me figure out how I want to live my life, how I want it to be, how I want to feel. Because if you're saying yes to all these things that essentially are wonderful, but you guys, like for example, speaking at that event, someone else could do that. Yes, I would do a great job and I, it would be fun. But at the end of the day, someone else can do that and it will be great. So for me, I, ha- I have to establish these boundaries so the other roles in my life can thrive. And then what I challenge you to do is rate your roles from 1 to 10. 10 being the best. I don't think that all of them would ever be 10s I, because of, well... We're not perfect, but if you feel like your friend, I feel like honestly my friend role is the hardest for me and I'm glad it's a top six because I have to be, that's why it's intentional, be an intentional friend. And if you're my friend listening to this, you're probably like, Julian, that's not true. No, I feel this way. Like I feel like out of all of my roles, um, this is my hardest one, but rating it, if my friend role is a four, man, I can set a goal for that week of I want to send out three snail mail letters to some friends. I want to FaceTime two friends. I want to have a gathering at my place with some friends. You know, go to a movie, do whatever, go to dinner and just be intentional with being a friend. So it helps you evaluate as well. And these roles in your life should be the six most important things to you, people to you essentially. I hope that this helped. Please, after this, I want to hear what your roles are. And I just want to hear how this episode spoke to you. I think creating boundaries starts with establishing your roles. And so Kylie was telling me that her and her husband were driving. And she said they spent all the time just figuring out what their roles were together. And I think that's really powerful that Eric understands that I have a friend role. And he understood, like, I went to a movie with some friends and he told me the next morning, he said, I'm so glad you did that. He understands that that's important to me. So definitely share if you have a spouse, share with your spouse, communicate it with your spouse and, and really create boundaries of saying no and not saying yes to everything. And then as far as saying no, I, I try my hardest to not lie. You all know what I'm talking about. If you don't want to do something, it's way easier to say, oh, I have something. Yeah, five hours later. Like, you could totally do it now, right? I want to challenge you to not lie. And I just also want to challenge you saying no without an excuse of, oh, we we would have, but, you know, this. When in all actuality, you would have never wanted to do it in the first place. You don't have to say, I would never want to do that. But you can just simply tell that person, hey, thank you for thinking of me. I'm going to say no, but I appreciate you. That's a very simple way. And if they're like, but why? Be like, hey, you know, I honestly just don't feel like I have to explain myself. And I hope you have a great day. It's time to stick up for yourself. It's time to create boundaries. And it's time to learn how to say no so you can say yes in the areas you want to say yes to. Friend, thanks for listening. I appreciate the heck out of you. I love this community. I love this podcast. Thank you for sharing and rating. It, this is how we function, is you sharing it with a friend, honestly. So thank you so much. Talk to you soon.